Hello and welcome back to the W Basketball Show. This episode we are joined by Jose. Actually, Jose, I'm not going to say your full name. Would you like to introduce your full name to our listeners? Hi, my name is Jose Ramon Alba Benyoc. I'm from Valencia, Spain. From my home, my hometown is in the region, and I normally cover female and male basketball here in the city of Valencia and some other small teams around in second or third division, normally related to Valencia Basket, which is the, the main team here. And I try to, to cover basketball generally international, mainly in Europe, being in female Eurobasket, male Eurobasket, and this summer being also in the World Cup of, of basketball in Manila, Fili- the Philippines, and just ready to, to explore more ways of basketball. And let's see what's next always. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so we we met at Eurobasket in 2023 in Slovenia, uh, and we we saw a few of the teams that we're going to talk about with the um Olympic qualifying tournament, uh, together. But yeah, Jose really kind of showed me, uh, or helped helped me along in you know interviewing <laughs> players after trainings, learning the rules that I didn't that I should have known myself, um, but just kind of made the the whole experience a lot easier for me. Uh, but I remember at Eurobasket, you weren't able to stay for the final because you had a wedding. Yeah, yeah, Greek wedding. You, you yeah. could know people could relate to it from the stereotypes that you could see in the movies. And I had to say that it's ninety percent like, uh, like in the movies, like Mamma oh, really? Mia, and so. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was really crazy, really mad experience. I was in a in a port drinking a beer where while I was watching the final where. Unfortunately, Spain didn't won the mm. the title. So, yeah, if I didn't mention it, Valencia is in, Valencia region is in Spain. So, yeah, I was trying to enjoy that that game, Spain Belgium, but in the end, Spain lost the lost the opportunity to be back on on, on the top. First time I've been in a Eurobasket, Spain won in Serbia in 2019. So, it was good to to see also the the journey. I had the opportunity before leaving, as you said, to, to say hi to some players I knew here from Valencia, which normally have five to four to five uh, players in in the roster. I, this this time is going to be the same four players being part of this Pre Olympic tournament. That in the case of Spain will be in Hungary with big teams like Canada and Japan and also the the host Hungary and also it they have representatives in the in the group of Australia, not Rebecca Allen, unfortunately now, but some players like Mari Gulic will be in Belém where already all the teams are. So it's going to be fun for, for Valencia Basket fans watching also the the pre Olympic tournaments all around the world. Yeah, yeah, I should have led you in there as well. I think most listeners would know Valencia's in Spain, but if you don't know Valencia's in Spain, um where Jose is calling at it's currently 8.30 p.m. for you. It's currently 6.30 yeah, a.m. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, 6.30 a.m. for me slash most of our listeners. Um, but yeah, you t- you talked about it before. You you got um you got to cover the World Cup in... You were in Man- Manila? Manila, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was crazy experience. It was crazy experience because I was part of the... Also, outside of basketball, we have a lot of insights, as you said, and... I've been part of the first media game ever in a World Cup, and I scored mm. the first bucket. Oh, the no World way. I didn't goals. know you had the first bucket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had, a, like, uh, on the top, fix it on my Twitter X account, whatever you want to call this social <laughs> media now. So I had fixed it there and pin it there, and it's like, man, this was crazy because it was the beginning of the game. I, I entered on a trail. I made Chris Leia celebrating my team, shout out the, the colleague, Passed me the ball, so it was it was really fun to to be part of. I made also sh- some uh, f- uh, air balls and everything like that. But man, <laughs> first bucket is first bucket. No, nobody yeah. can get from me that. Yeah, that's I didn't know that. You, so so wow, you had yeah. the first bucket in the first ever celebrity basketball game at a World Cup. Yeah, kind it's of. Amazing. Yeah, because we play against uh, influencers and celebrities from the Philippines, and we were all media from all around the world, and we had yeah. one. One guy from the Philippines in the roster in the squad, and we won. So yeah, it was funny to be there. Yeah, that's amazing. Congratulations! Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, actually, before we move any further, do you wanna do you wanna plug your blog and your Instagram? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I went to this all all these events called 
the website is called at the buzzer cb the at the buzzer is like the buzzer of course in english we have other names in spanish but and the cb it's more uh, like for for spanish meaning like basketball club like club de baloncesto which tries to to be involved with the people not only basketball things not only basketball reports but history is all around the world all around spain that tells true true meaning to basketball like one guy in lugo in the north part of of spain that brought jerseys from national team of bosnia when jan and musa was playing there and they make kind of big uh, demanding jerseys and he he deal it with it to take it to lugo and that's kind of the stories we also tell and it's truly amazing that uh, we can write about it like being a small project, being here, being uh, there in Manila, as you said, having insights on mixed zone, running all the way because mm-hmm. the arena in Manila was not so well uh, scheduled in that sense. Mixed zone, you had to like running all around the yeah. arena to go back to the press conference. In Slovenia, it was way better because it was mixed yeah. zone and then press press conference. But here, it's like if you had to, to run to the other side of the arena and then returning to the press conference zone, and going to the st- to the stand so these kind of things we tell it all the time like i had also one video in georgia where i i explained the people where how tough it was to arrive to the arena in the euro ba- male euro basket back in 2022 to arrive to the arena how crazy i missed one time the correct road which, which was already around rocks and crazy things you don't arrive through the through the pre- and time I had to go to a cemetery to arrive to, to the arena was was truly crazy. Like <laughs> these things, I also comment everything in Adivasa TV. So yeah, that's part of the show. That's part of of being here, having fun. Yeah. So that's at the buzzer CB. I'll leave links to that in. I'll leave a link to the Instagram and a link to the website in the description of this episode. <laughs> Um, and just before we get to the Olympic qualifying tournaments, who, what teams did you, oh, sorry, what countries did you get to see in Manila and who were like some of the biggest stars you got to talk to? And yeah, just uh, person. I, I saw, I saw the United States, all these guys that are shining right now, like <laughs> Tyrese Halliburton, uh, Anthony Edwards, uh, also Cam, uh, Cam Thomas, which is not getting uh, this season quite good but he's uh, an amazing player mm. miles miles bridges like with the pistol like this you know <laughs> this this guy was also there and a lot of people crazy like greek players were, were also there and i had good connection with greek players here and there mm. some of them are playing in spain in Euro League. others are here also playing with other teams some others are also returning to to the competition after being sanctioned. I also saw New Zealand, your your brothers, like mm-hmm. doing the the hack and everything mm-hmm. like that, which was amazing for me. Watching it live, I saw Serbia, saw Germany, Schroeder, and all and the uh, the Wagner brothers. I I saw Lithuania, kind of these players that were were there. Also, I've been in the in the stadium where it actually holds the record for most uh, attendance in a in a World Cup a game, which was not in the arena. It was normally that we moved for 40 kilometers to, to another arena. Oh, wow. And that game's Ital- Italia, Philippines. So Simone Fontecchio for the Utah Jazz, Jordan Jackson, these people watching it here uh, here and there. And it was a truly amazing experience on and also I see from quarterfinals there's like a, a joke here in, in with the people I know because when I was returning from Manila to, to Istanbul to make the scale to be back home here in Valencia I was in the same uh, plane with the Slovenian national team so I've been oh, cool. in the same plane with all the players in the squad and some say oh no no how the hell how much money do you pay to be there? And my, my brother, one of my brothers said to me, even, and it was like, man, I, I just booked my ticket and <laughs> returned at home, like when the tournament ends. So, yeah, it was kind of fun. And at the Buster CB allowed me to be doing these experiences and in the World Cup. A lot of people to mention, but yeah, if not, we can stay uh, 40 minutes talking about it and not talking about <laughs> other topics. Uh, 
That, that's I'm happy to hear that, man. That's 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 great for you. Um, who who's who do you think the most high profile player that you interviewed with uh was at the tournament, and how were they to interview? Uh, I mean, if we count the press conference talks, maybe I think uh, Tyrus Halibarta, which is all star now. So yeah, I think he kind of good impression with Tyrese in press conference and good guy, maybe a little bit uh, too much American for, for my own uh, <laughs> because that day, remember back in the, in the month, it was that conversation of this uh, trial athlete pe person that, that was, ra that is a runner that say United mm -hmm. uh, world champions mm -hmm. of what, and the, all this kind of stuff. And, he was more more cautious on and like saying maybe he misunderstood his words, but he was like in, <laughs> they end up being fourth the fourth in in the World Cup against players like Germany, like Andrea Andrea Sobs, amazing player that destroyed some of some of them shooting three. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think Taris Halibarton, but uh, you know I also met Dylan Brooks. So <laughs> depending on what you you could say on it. The NBA moves so quickly these days, it's hard to keep up. Shams and Woj are breaking stories left and right, but the quick timeout is right there with them to keep you informed on the latest NBA news. Stop in and let us break it down as it happens. Find the quick timeout on the Deep 2 Podcast Network. Okay, now we can move forward to the Olympic qualifying tournaments. We'll be talking okay. about, so there's four tournaments in total. We'll be talking about tournament three, which will be held in Brazil, and tournament four, mm -hmm. which will be held in Hungary. Uh, tournament three is Australia's tournament um, held in Brazil. It will, of course, feature Brazil, uh, as well as Germany and Serbia and Australia, who I've mentioned. And then tournament four, which will be held in Hungary, uh, will, of course, have Hungary, who's hosting Spain, Japan, and Canada. So why would you like to start in Brazil or in Hungary for this one? Uh, Brazil, I think it's better. Okay, cool. So I've talked way too much about Australia lately on this show and the Opals. So we can just probably move on to, let's start with Brazil because I feel like I've seen Australia play Brazil in a 2020 um, Olympic qualifying game and won by a comfortable margin at the, in the end, but it was pretty tight and physical early. And I think Liz Cambage was playing back then and she kind of brought a physicality to the game that was very necessary coming up against Brazil. And then we played them in a World Cup qualifier in 2022. And that was pretty, we got, we got to an early, early lead quite, sorry, we got to a comfortable lead quite early. Um, but and then we were able to hold it. Uh, and yeah, it was a pretty wider, wider victory in the end. But yeah, my understanding is that they play slow, they're physical, and they have a lot of size. But I don't know too much about Brazil beyond that. Um, Jose, what, what do we need to know about the Brazilian national team? About Brazil, I think you, you need to know mostly this is kind of team that is ready for everything. They have really... Really veteran players. I remember back in the day, Erika de Sousa was still the legend. And Erika de Sousa is playing in her last years of basketball. She's now mm. with Brazilian League, with Ituano, if I don't remember that. But they didn't uh, achieve the, the point of having a, a new player that changed the, the structure that Ravit and said, OK, I'm the new big girl here, mm. like maybe Essie McBegor did at least per what I watch, uh, to make an example, I make an Australian example that the people can relate to for your podcast. So mm. I think uh, Brazil, it's like a elder team with mm. all the good sense of the world, like veteran players that already had one decade of success and even one decade of uh, people that is living the life of basketball from other perspective, from other situations. So... For me, it makes sense to to know that they are a team that is ready for everything, that is capable to do everything. But as you said, it's maybe there are like uh, two or three players with the age of Lauren Jackson on mm, the court. True. So that that's the point on on this situation. If you didn't face uh, play uh, players, young players which have also Australia, you are mm. going to have problems. 
maybe the the player which have uh, more experience and also it's quite young is the case is the case of Damiris Dantas, which is playing now in Norman Sport with Alexandra Katanich, not your beloved Ivana, but <laughs> her sister. Both of them are are going to be in the Olympics, but I will take it that for later. So Brazil, it's a team, yeah, with a lot of not knowledge for for some of the young players that I think will will barely play. Also, Cleo de Sousa and and this player I mentioned, it, Erika de Sousa. Also, it's Erika is going to be massive force again, but she's really experience it and she had already her own so I think it's going to be it's going to be a, a hard one for Brazil to qualify but they are playing in Belém they are playing at home with per what I saw the tickets are really cheap like the most expensive ones are also like 20 25 uh, dollars we could say but mm. it's really massive so I think it's going to be a a good team because they are playing at home if they were not playing at home in in Brazil, I think it will be easier to to the other play to the other teams to beat them. But playing at home, it's going to be tough. Yeah, uh, you, you you touched on a couple of Serbian players just there. I think we can we can pivot towards the um. Oh, your camera just fell. <laughs> uh, I think we can pivot towards the Serbian team now. Um, yeah, how, how, how do you feel about this Serbian team uh, compared to the Serbian team that was sent to Eurobasket in 2023, where we got to see them? It's quite similar. Sorry, it's like oh, good. a team like uh, it didn't change it a lot. They they are missing a key player like Alexandra Shervenakic, which is having, a, let's say, a, a gap year. She, she left the Turkish side he, she was playing for. She played a little bit in Sopron in Hungary, but I think it's the biggest uh, a person that uh, national team led by Marina Malkovic is going to miss. Uh, mm. There are some players like Ivana Raka that had collected a lot of MVPs in in the la- in the last weeks, in the last month in in Italy. So she arrives in in her best shape. So it's going to mm. be fun. Also, as I mentioned it. Uh, Ivana Katanic and Alexandra Katanic, the two sisters, one playing in the London Lions, the, the, your favorite in the last Eurobasket, and Alexandra playing in in Turkey for Orman Sport, the, the colleague of Dantas from Brazil. So it's going to be really, really good experience for for these kind of players to to show up in the global states. Some of them are going to be new in this, others not, like Mina Georgievic also. Is going to be in the Eurobasket. She's in the development team of Emla Konut. When we talk back to Australia with Alana Smith, I will mm. I will tell you exactly what is Emla Konut, and you probably will be shocked. <laughs> so let's focus first on Serbia and also some players like Dragana Stankovic, a player that was here and there trying to to figure it out where to be in, in Europe. She, uh, she's on a team call it Polkovic in, in Poland and she's been great this season also mm. starting from the qualifiers and being important with this Poland team in the north of the of the country. Some others like Sasha Chayo not being around with any other team that was uh, making her to to be focused on through this time of the season. She's like free agent. She have mm. not more team than the national team. I think Nevena Jovanovic is in the same situation. Uh, good people, good players that are going to give bet- uh, experience to this really young team. Serbia is the opposite side of Brazil. They are young, they are able to run and they are going to fight, but without a lot of experience. Also, Masha Jankovic is going to be uh, a key a key part of this team, playing for Romanian side uh, Sepsi, which made her, uh, its debut in Euroleague and the most experienced players outside of Stankovic, Chayo and uh, Neka Jovanovic are going to be uh, Tina Krajicnic, which still play for Yekaterinburg in Russia. So mm. well, first Russian appearance for for any of the national teams here, one of the players playing here in national team. And also, of course, Ivan Anderson, the 
the guard they nationalized like two euro baskets ago to to earn that title back in 2021 in Valencia, in my, as I mentioned in my hometown, close to my hometown. So Yvonne Anderson is going to be the leader. She will she is part of the Fenerbahce team this year after being playing in France and Italy recently. So big step for the now 33 year old point guard, not naturalized and. Krajicic and her are going to be the more ready players. Krajicic inside, even Anderson not being the classic point guard, but more this American point guard combo mm. that could make shots and could share the ball, but not that much. So maybe the Katani sisters could be the ones that could be the the facilitate could facilitate the ball better to the to their teammates. So it's going to be fun to to see what kind of Serbian national team we are going to see under Marina Malkovic now without all the responsibilities more than being the Serbian coach after leaving Fener early this season. Mm. Yeah, they were, they're very... um. We got, so we got to see them firsthand and Germany, who we'll talk about next. Yeah, Serbia really, really bring the game to the other team. They press, they like to get in the lanes. Uh, you know, not the most physical team, but still physical uh, well, mm-hmm. they're very physical, but I think it's more about rushing the other team and getting up in their grill rather than like banging on the inside. But then, you know, Tina on the inside, she doesn't take anything from anyone. So they still have that toughness uh, and they like to get the ball going up and down. Uh, and they have a mm-hmm. great product, especially when they're on. They they had a few like blowout wins. And, you know, usually in a blowout in basketball, like a 20 plus point game, you're like, you're pretty bored by the end of it. But they, they keep it pretty interesting even in yeah like a like a game that has a wide margin so they're definitely a team uh definitely a team to watch and germany i wrote about uh, an article about germany a couple of weeks ago and talked about you know the rise of german basketball um and i think we will get to see firsthand the the you know how german basketball is going the team we saw in eurobasket didn't feature the sabali sisters but the mm-hmm. Olympic qualifying team yeah. will feature the Sabali sisters. Yeah. That too is on her way to like, she's already one of the most prolific scorers in the world. Uh, and she was one of the most like dynamic scorers in the WNBA last season. Um, but yeah, what, yeah. What are the Sabali sisters and what is this uh, German team? What have they added to their roster since Eurobasket? Oh, well, I think they, they are the, the biggest add to the team are indeed the, the Savali sisters, because the Eurobasket team was solid team with Silke, with Mari Gulic, Valencia Basket Center, doing her best this season, this up and down season madness. And also Leone Fivic being an important player in in Saragossa also this year with the their amazing qualifi- qualification to quarterfinals the first time of their history. So most adding part to to the to this German German team beside of the Savali sisters, I think it's is the experience some of their players get. Also Svenja Brunkhorst, which was playing mostly all the three per three basketball, is joining mm-hmm. the female team of Alba Berlin in first female division in Germany. This newly created project, which adds a little bit more recognition to this young project being here and there and trying to add some different perceptions of basketball to this young project and for me it's also this young player Sontang for me also as I said it's they added more experience to to their knowledge of basketball that they mm. had in in Eurobasket and you know Sa- uh, Satu is being crazy in China not playing anymore for Fenerbahce and also being part of the Dallas Wings this this past summer season where she was truly amazing Leaving aside the Eurobasket, maybe with Savali, the, the Eurobasket would have been different with, for Germany. And even couldn't, even they could made it better, even they did it truly, truly well, truly good. But Niara also being great with Prague, being teammate of Essie McBeg or being a team that qualified first in their group in, in Euroleague, gaining home, con- home court advantage for the quarterfinals of Euroleague. So... Yeah, it's the Savalis are a, a big ad, but not it's they are going to be there like Jonkel Jones for Bosnia in the World Cup. This team already have a base, already have something to do, already mm, yeah. did the qualification pro- process without John, this Jonkel Jones magnitude player, which is not exactly, but in, in the way of maybe 
being with uh, Satu and also with Niara. And it's not one player, it's, a, it's two that can also be adaptable to this team. They also show it up in the Eurobasket qualification, the already ongoing next tournament for 2025. You know the finals is going to be in Greece, in Piraeus. So the Germany is going to try to be there. Already qualified as the as host, they are going to host a group in Hamburg. So this is more part of what's next for Germany basketball. As you said, it's not only be in the Olympics. They are already qualified for the next two big tournaments in Europe and in the world. They are going to host, as I said, one of the groups, one stage of groups in in the Eurobasket, and they are going to host the the next World Cup. So the rising of German basketball was also helped for that in the next future. They've been I think without a, a qualification in Eurobasket for the past 16 or or 15 years, and now they are not only in the birds to to be part in the Olympics. They already gained the spot in the next Eurobasket and also in the next World Cup, whatever it happens in in this tournament. So this is what Germany is betting on on itself in on its female basketball and these players, not only the Savali sisters, Mari Gulitz, Leoni Fibic, only. 2001 uh, prospect star that is going to be part of the New York Liberties this season, mm. this upcoming summer season. So it's going to be good for for Germany that they had a project and they are going to have a project for the next two, three years to keep developing this this squad. Yeah, I feel like at Eurobasket as well, Leonie Fibic was really the only creator and scorer like that had like that created from scratch. And the Savali sisters will, you know, I think they're probably better at, at you know, creating than Fibic is. And I think it'll, it'll, um, the trickle on effect of that where Fibic can be the second or the third creator on the court, that I think that'll only help her game. Um, so we'll, we'll move on to tournament four in a sec, but what do you think the standings will be for tournament three? Who, who'll be first, second, third, fourth? For me, I think if nothing goes wrong, could be easily Serbia or Australia. And Germany, it's going to be third if Brazil didn't show up well. So mm. that's are my thought, my early thoughts, even if we are only one week on on to be there. So mm. my thoughts are Serbia and, and Australia are going to be on the top. Yeah, I was going to say, now, now you've given me the confidence to say it, I'm gonna. I was gonna say Australia, Serbia, Germany, Brazil. That would be my order. Mm-hmm. Um, but Germany. I mean, Brazil is ranked. I think eighth or ninth in the world right now. That's their FIBA ranking. But I, you know, they they seem a bit random. The FIBA ranking sometimes. Yeah, they. I talk with some people that make that rankings and said, "Man, that thing it's crazy." Not the main points with all the stuff, but the points normally talks about the. The right, the race they made in the last five, six years. But okay. normally, when you arrive, it's like for the male team of Australia in the last uh, World Cup, like you show up uh, trying to be in the quarterfinals, and then you you figure it out. You can give just the team to to give it. You need to have other players mm. surrounding them and not allowing them to do it. Also, maybe it just could be the case for Brazil that mm. I don't know if Brazil could be out in the second day of the tournament. Could be in. Until the last day, I don't know what is going to happen, but Brazil have to change a lot of things because they fell fell short also to be in in Japan, and I don't know what is going to be here to be to be in France this summer. But it's a tough group because it's not United States, but Brazil is not the young legs that Serbia have, that Germany have, and and some of the Australian players that are on the team are. Also, young Esti McBevor, it's on the MVP race in this season of Euroleague, and mm. I think will will be impressing to to be uh, one of the top players in this uh, tournament number three on on the qualifying tournament. This episode of the Deep Two is presented by Gelateria Bico, the official gelato of the Deep Two. Gelateria Bico, handmade gelato in the heart of Brunswick. So I should have also said at the top, but, you know, better late than never, the Olympic qualifying tournament runs from the 8th of February to the 11th of February. And Mm -hmm. Australia's first game will be 10 a.m. local time on Friday, the 9th of February, and we'll be playing against Brazil. And over to tournament four, uh, which will be held in Hungary, um, Spain's first game will be at 2.30 a.m. on the 9th of Feb in Australian time, but it'll be about... It'll be on 
Thursday evening for you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, let, let's let's start with Spain. How do you feel about Spain's team going into the qualifiers? I have my doubts, but I think Spain will make it. We will give the 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 Spanish passport to Megan Gustafsson. Feel sure to be in the Eurobasket. Indeed, it was officiated in the day of starting the Eurobasket, so national team had not the chance to to put uh, Gustafsson already on the roster for the tournament of last summer. And I think that was the main part that didn't allow Spain to win Eurobasket. But Megan Gustafsson is now with the team, some young players with some experience in in Spain with Maite Cazorla, Raquel Carrera, some other old and um, veterans like Leo Rodriguez, Keral Casas, others like Rivet in the last moment having their their prime of career later and let's see how how they can perform now in the big states like uh, Marion Artig, which has been one of the sensations in last Eurobasket. But yeah, it's going to be fun also having uh, Alba Torrens, one of the superstars in Spain for the last decade, la uh, a lot of injuries back back then, but now she's kind of uh, recovered, recovered on on a three-pointer uh, specialist, scoring three-pointers like with a some kind of facility but right now i think spain have have an opportunity to be on on the olympic tournament again having better performance than in in japan that fell short also really early i think was quarter finals and it was bad feeling for all of us watching last dance of laia palau with the national team i think now the team needs to to be back and show up what basketball what spanish basketball is about with Maria Conde maybe as the star, but that's the point for me. Who's going to be the star? Who's going to be mm. the the main character in the Spain national team? First big tournament with with the Spain after the Eurobasket for Miguel Mendez, one amazing coach. But uh, who's going to be the star? Is going to be Raquel Carrera, which still have some problems to to do it. It's Maria Conde, which uh, didn't arrive to get that pick to be a, a leader of a good team. Needs to be Silvia Dominguez, which is already lacking some energy in the in the clutch moments of the game. That's my main question. If Spain finds out quick who is going to be the, the star player and who needs to build the, 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 the games, not only starting on a study, but being the player that when the ball is hot saying, I'm going to get this ball and I'm going to win this game. Mm. If, we, if the team finds out that it's going to be good qualification, if not, Hungary, Canada with a Spanish coach and Japan, it's going to be crazy to to be there. And of course, I think uh, it's going to be a problem if, if Spain didn't figure it out really quick. But let's see, Mavuli already played in Spain, so could be a problem for the national team if if the team didn't focus on what's important. Mm. Um, before I move on, just quickly, who do you think that player should be for Spain? If you had to pick. For me, even if... Didn't sound correct for me. Should be Raquel Carrera. She had problems also the last few weeks with the quadriceps and the knee. So maybe it's forcing her a little bit too much. I hope she will not be injured on this tournament because she was already with some problems. But if if it had to be me, Raquel Carrera should be the one and put that step up that that she deserves and national basketball deserves to have a. A young player born in in this century being the the real star of of this team. Mm. Um. Now your first game is against Japan. I I don't know too much about the Japanese national team, but I've I've I'm I feel like they might be the fourth strongest team in your group. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What 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 do you know about Japan? I I remember this point guard which was with the Washington Mystics. I don't remember the name now. But Rui Rui Machida. It, Rui Machida, Rui Machida, also Mabuli, as I said, she has a Nigerian uh, parents, but she's Japanese born and raised, and she already played for Estudiantes team in first division. She didn't was so much impressive when I watched her live, but she also signed a contract with the with the Liberty for this summer, and uh, I think Mabuli will be uh, one of the surprising players in this tournament because she. She's doing an amazing season beside of that game I mentioned it. And it's a team that have a, a really good variance that can play it really quick, that can go really fast. They are the reigning uh, silver medal champs. They changed coach 
because the coach that was in the last Olympics moved to the male uh, team. So I think it's important for Japan to be a, a team that is running a lot, not playing in, mm. into a, a static action. So for Spain, it's going to be good if they force it to, to static actions and didn't allow them to run. As I said, but, uh, Spain have older old players, but also young players. But the young players normally adapt to these uh, old ones and make more slow players, more different actions. But in my opinion, it's going to be on what game can try to to adapt their game to to indeed that match. So the the style is going to be everything on it, and that's going to make the difference on one or or another. And it's going to be critical that win starting from the fir- very first game. If we take in mind what cal- what talent have Canada and of course Hungary at home. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, Hungary at home. We saw Hungary at the Eurobasket. They were great. They had great fans. Fans that traveled to yeah. Slovenia and they brought the they brought the drums, they brought the noise, the chants, everything. Uh and they've just been growing over the past nine years and they're just keeping on growing. And you know, uh hosting an Olympic qualifying tournament is just another step yeah. um in the right direction. Uh I feel like Hungary've got a very balanced attack. They've got they've got you know a, a little bit of depth at each position position but um they don't have the depth that you know Spain or Canada would have who are in their group but they do have you know they are the host nation and they 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 do have that um you know you can only assume more support at the olympic qualifiers uh how how do you how do you think Spain uh sorry Hungary is looking um especially at home for the OQT they they are a good team, as you said. They are in Sopron, one of the homes of basketball in the country, for female basketball indeed. And they had since the last uh, Eurobasket qualifying rounds. Uh, Dorka Juhas, the player that mm. was this summer with the Minnesota Lynx, she's been crazy on, on last game here in Valencia with Italian team skill. She made 18 points in a, t- in a game that her team do almost lost by 20. So she's always trying to be the leader even when the things are good or the things are bad. And if she adapts well to the systems of Norbert Skelly with Nina Ajo having some good games, Reka Lelic, Bernadette Hatar, which kind of struggled with Avenida and she's not uh, already well recovered from her injury mm-hmm. last summer, but she's trying to keep doing the things well. Good thing for Spain is that uh, Hatar was playing this year for Salamanca most of the games, so she already she's already known for some of the top players in national team. Uh, but most of the things are are like this. And Hungary at home having pressure last time. Spain played against Hungary in Hungary lost. So in some uh, friendly games back last summer before the Eurobasket. So indeed, was in Sopron also. So it's it's going to be crazy for Spain, like be back there, not knowing the the spot, knowing the team without that addition of of Dorca. So I think if if Spain finds finds out, as I said, the the star that leads the way for for team, it's mm. going to be a win for Spain that game and most of them. But if Dorka shows up and says, okay, I'm Dorka Juhas, I'm part of this Hungarian national team and Hungary needs to make this step forward against Spain after all that occurred in the Eurobasket, I think Hungary have a chance. Yeah, for sure. I think the main thing for uh, Hungary's opponents will be to get out to good starts because if you dig yourself that hole early, Hungary will have, yeah, the crowd behind them, they'll already be loud, they'll have the momentum um and then you just dig yourself a bigger hole than than you need to than necessary and i think it will be their bigs uh that will be the key for them uh you know in these early stretches in the game to try and get them that lead early on uh and yeah you talked about Dorka Juhas who is playing in Minnesota where Alana Smith just signed and Bridget mm. Carlton has been playing the last few years um, Bridget Carlton, who of course had a forty-one point game a mu- about with, a month ago, with yeah, in with, in, in Hungary in Unigior. Yes, yeah, Unigior, Unigior, which is a team that didn't qualify for the 
for the quarterfinals of the Euro League, but Carleton was a, a late addition to the team, mm. and she made like I think it's top four a uh, performance with that forty-one point game, surpassing one former Spanish player Blanca Ares. Mm. The actual wife of Sergio Scariolo, head coach of the Spanish male national team. Oh, so go. best for uh, highest for performance in, in basketball history in EuroLeague for for the modern era. So mm. it's it's crazy for Bridget Carleton doing that move and, and then presented the way they were presented with the Minnesota League with this Pokemon stuff. And so it was really <laughs> yeah, fun to yeah. watch. And, it's good for her having this kind of stuff. Also, last year playing for Avenida, not not adding well, but Carleton with Canada is going to be mad. And I don't know if she's going to make this 41-point performance in this tournament, but I'm afraid that she will do it against Spain. <laughs> Just hopefully it's not against Spain. I it's got hopefully. to see her. I saw her at the World Cup in Australia two years ago uh, at the end of 2022. She was one of my first interviews. She's so good to talk to. She's She's very giving with her time. Um, but she had a 27 point game and she's like, I can't remember what it was exactly, but she only took like 11 or 12 shots or something. And this is back it's before, mad. you know, her 2023 development, uh, because she wasn't really getting consistent minutes with the links. And then I think, I feel like last year she really earned them and, and now she's seeing the benefits of that, um, with the 40 burger. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, now let, let, finishing on Canada. Uh, I, I feel like they're probably, I think you, your team is the strongest. I think Spain's the strongest in this group, but I, I think Canada's probably second, um, right behind you. Uh, I feel like the thing that they'll be missing that you, that Spain will have is playing with that, like fierceness and that passion and that emotion. I think that, Mm -hmm. um, Spain will bring that more than Canada and that'll end up being what, what gets Spain or what, why I think Spain is stronger than Canada in this tournament. But do you, would you agree? Do you think they're, they're second best or, or am I completely wrong? I think even could be the first, in my opinion. If we talk about Hungary and the development of Norbert Skelly on the past decade to this team, Victor La Peña just arrived like a few few months ago to, to this team, Spanish coach, which knows most of the players in in Spain, in Spanish uh, Roster, she coached uh, Cristina Oviña and Keral Casas back in the years in Zaragoza in the older team of Manfilter Casablanca. And he's now on, on a good position. So I think it's going to be really, really good coach. And uh, Canada have that a little bit of Spanish soul thanks to to be with, with Victor, which uh, coached some of the greatest teams in Europe and now is having this this is a step up in the in the world stage. So yes, I think uh, Canada have a really good players, have a really good system, and of course, a player, a uh, coach that knows almost the players that are going to be part in the national team. It's going to be a problem for that reason because knows how to deal with them, how to stop them, and that's why I mentioned it. Who should be the rising best star or who mm. should be the leading star in this case on? On Spain because he's maybe one of the players he didn't know that much. Mm. So yes, that's going to be the the thing, and that's going to be the the problem for for Spain having a Canada on the top of of its own and having a, a people that it's ready to fight until the last seconds. Which mm. I don't know if Spain is going to be capable to to fight against, and that's my my problem. That's my my thought on thinking if Spain is going to be in the top on or if a crazy game against Hungary or Japan could make them to to be outside of the contention to be mm -hmm. on on the next Olympics. But I think it's going to be a fun game that Spanish Canada, Spanish team against Canadian team for sure. Yeah. And as we did for tournament three, for tournament four, who do you think will be first through four? Uh, I think ah okay. Uh, I think Canada is going to be first, second Spain, third Hungary, and fourth Japan. I hope Spain will not end the fourth position, but I hope Spain will be the second. For yeah, me. I think I think it'll be Spain, Canada, Hungary, and Japan. I think you're you're being very cautious. I think you're you're, you're yeah. you know, not getting your hopes too high ahead of the tournament. Yeah, of course. With Canada, as I said, they are a team that is constantly changing. I. I need to check again on the roster, but they are a team that have have the knowledge of running, have the 
the ability to to be on their position always. So Bridget Carleton leading the way is going to be a problem for sure. Yeah. All right, Jose, let's let's leave it there. Um, maybe we can just leave on who you think will win in the three point shootout between Steph Curry and Sabrina <laughs> Ionescu. Um, but thank you so much for joining me uh, this morning. I have to get to work, so I'm, I'm running a little <laughs> bit late now. But thank you so much for joining me. You gave us great insights, and I'm sure our listeners will be, you know, will have more players to think about and more reason to watch at least tournaments two and three mm-hmm. of the Olympic qualifying tournament. But before you go, Sabrina or Steph? I think uh, Steph is a little bit old already compared to, to Sabrina, who is going to have fun also in another of these Olympic tournaments. But yes, I think it's going to be Steph because he he knows the the journey on these kind of competitions. And depending mm-hmm. on the kind of the ball he will have in his hands, I think it's going to be his win because he already rules these kind of tournaments. But it's it's going to be fun. Thanks for having me here. No pleasure, and uh, I'll I'll probably also go with Steph. Um, Sabrina had the like the best three point shooting uh, shootout. Sorry, the three point the best three point contest of all time last year. But that she was mid season, and you know Steph is mid season now. He's he's in form. He had sixty points the other day, so it's pretty crazy to go against Steph. But maybe if it was the other way around, and Steph was in the middle of the off season, and Sabrina was in the middle of her season, I'd probably pick Sabrina. Um, but yeah, thank you, Jose, and enjoy your night. I will enjoy. I will be here and there watching more basketball. And <laughs> of course, it's going to be a pleasure if you call me any other time to talk <laughs> about Australia. And best of the luck for the Australian national team also with Beck Allen, which didn't end up well. His mm. her, uh, her journey here in Valencia, it's sad because she was a beloved player here. And beloved person for some of people. She had a good connection with a fan called Alejandra. So it was special. But in the end, I think things didn't work on second chapter. Second chapters are normally not the best, as we say in Spain. And mm. hope, hope she it will be the good. The injury is leaving her her own and she will be part of the Australian team having her, her best life also. Mm. Great. Thanks, Jose. Bye, good night, good morning.